Hello, fellow compatriots, and welcome to yet another review! Yes, that's right. Uh, today, we're going to be looking at a, a new build. Now, this build specifically is going to be replicating the... a small... A, a, it's basically going to be like a scaled-down version of the, of the Mata build. So, this figure may seem short, but that's because I'm making it in proportion with the actual Tomata sets and instead of the Tomata marks that I have done, i.e. Kopaka and Tahu, even though Tahu is going to be revamped um, to look uh, more set accurate, just like the Kopaka mark that I did. But that is besides the point. So without further ado, fellow compatriots, I introduce to you all Base form Tributron, my self mock. Now this is like a basically a stand-in of uh, my self mock. This is, and what I mean by base form is this is what he used to look like without all the prosthetics that uh, he had. So um, this is basically him in his normal like biomechanical state before he had any upgrades, basically equipping like Nuva armor essentially, and him having like him being a cyborg in a way <laughs> due to his design. So this is basically his base form before he had any upgrades, and um, he's basically about the size of your standard Tuamata, and I also gave him. Uh, cape as well. So basically, what happened to him, lore-wise, is that he used to live on Spheris Magna. He was created by the great beings as as he, like your standard Toa. He had his own Toa team. Except the only thing was is that even though he was a Toa of Ice, he didn't exactly have the personality of one. You know, not being as cold and calculative. Instead of, he was very energetic and full of life, you know, very hyperactive, which goes against, like, your standard, like, Toe of Ice. Kind of like, um, Helrix, instead of Helrix being, like, calm and passive, due to her element, she's very aggressive. So this is translated here with this, um, mock. You know, he's very hyperactive instead of cold and calculative. And one time, when battling with the Skrull, he lost his entire Toad team, and he lost his best friend, um, it, which was the which was the Toa Fire in his team. And uh, to remember him, he he wears um his cape that the Toa Fire had. The Toa Fire had a cape, and to always remember his best friend, he wears this cape in remembrance. Uh, for his sorrow after losing his team. And he had a all-out vengeance against the scroll, and then later it goes to the great beings. Um, so that he's like, okay, you know what? I have nothing left, so show me the ways, you know, give me, give me great power, and so forth. So he ended up getting an upgrade by the great beings, becoming very loyal to them, and helping them out. Yeah, I'm going to be making a full animation regarding, like, the story of this character, so I'm not going to be going in full detail. But anyways, let's go ahead and take a close look at this figure. As you can see, you know, st standard leg design. Uh, kind of replicates the, the Mata build with the shoulders. He also has <laughs> you know, a... A Gen 2 uh, Kanoka disc that I have made, as well as a little blaster as well, kind of like um, his upgraded version. Yeah, but anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at the possibility. But first, let's go ahead and take off this um, this cape, so that you guys don't have have to keep seeing him. Wearing the cape. Let's take this cape off since... If I can actually take it off, that that would be nice. Okay, there we go. I got it off. Boom. Yeah, you had to take off a few things just to, to take on and off the cape. Uh, so let's go ahead and start from the feet up. So ankles, they bent in this far. Uh, 
bend side to side this much, they can bend forward this much, they can, he can go on his full tippy toes if he still wanted to, so great range. Um, his knees, they can only bend this much, but if you use this joint over here, um, he can bend a little bit more, even though that looks a little unnatural, this is actually his knee, this is just a connection point. Uh, for the, uh, the upper leg, it's not meant to be a joint, even though it it is one, basically. I um, mean, based off of the Tomata design. Um, legs, they can go forward this far. Uh, so, and they can go back this far, so you got excellent range there. Outward movement only goes out this much due to the design. Now, as for the waist, um, I actually compressed the waist down, um, so he cuts uh, plenty of twisting movement, he can even do a crunch, these pistons can actually work, you know, it's basically a compressed down version of the piston waist design that I have done at a very small scale, trying to make it in scale with the re original Tomata torso without any functions. This figure basically has like zero functions except for the blaster um, that he has. Uh, so he got plenty of movement in that regard. And you had to be careful when posing this figure because he is basically mostly made out of system. Shoulders, they can go up this far. Um, and they got a little bit of inward movement as well, so you can put him in dynamic poses. Now he has full 360 in the shoulder. Um, arms, um, they can actually, at this joint here, can move back this far, move forward this far. Um, he got that much outward movement, as you can see. And since it's on a ball joint, you got plenty of rotation as well. He can do uh, pass a 90 degree bend in the elbow. Um, he can break his fingers if you so want him to. Why would you break his fingers? Is why? Why do I keep breaking his fingers? Stop, Trivitron. Stop, stop. Uh, yes, I'm talking to myself. Isn't that funny? I talk to myself as I review of, of, of myself. If that makes any sense. No, it doesn't. Okay, up and down movement at the hand. Full 360. Uh, fingers, as you, can, as you saw, can curl inward. Um, and extend out and also they have this unintentional swivel here uh, kill me now um, and at the head he has a full 360 yeah he, he has a full 360 at the head as you can see he can look down this far until like his head bumps into the the top section of his torso and it can bend back this far so he can bend 90 degrees back why would you do that at the back over here he got this armature for his gun which can which is at a base hinge over here where the spine is located so you got that over here you also got another rotation segment and up and down movement over here so you got um, plenty of hinges so that you can put the gun in array of poses now as you can see he has a sword which he can hold if he so wants to right over here there we go and of course he has this weapon over here now this can be like your standard arm cannon or you can remove it that is an option um, these two this section over here pegs into the side of the arm into the studs and you can see this axle over here well he can use it as a handle so that he can actually hold his gun like an actual blaster so you can go pew pew if you so want to. Now, um, as you can see, due to the design of the arms, these they, it sags. But if you bounce it right, let me see. Oh no, no, there, there's too much give in the 
Wait, wait, did I fix it? No, I did not fix it, but... He can at least, you know, do his... The standard, yeah, I got a gun, look at me, I am awesome! Um, kind of look, if you still want him to do that. Now, of course, prior to the function, he can as well um, shoot uh, the Kanoka disc. Now, only thing you had to do is load it up, and this side has to be pointing downwards. Wait a minute, no, 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 I, I did it wrong. Okay, sorry. Okay, so this side down. And let's move this out of the way. And you basically just squeeze. You squeeze and it shoots very effectively. Let's do it again. I think the, the surface is too smooth to spin now. Yeah, I think it's too smooth. No, so if you want this function to work, um, the setup that I have right now, it's basically too smooth of a surface for it to get any grip for it to spin, but it basically spins on the ground. If you have any, want to see th this function in action, I highly suggest you go ahead and watch the Onu Matoran review that I've done. Links in the description down below. But, as you can see, it shoots pretty effectively has quite a range to it as well but yeah also he has another function as you could guess I mean that this figure doesn't have exactly every single function imaginable just because this is his base form you know before he had any upgrades and became powerful uh, but there is the blaster can in fact shoot there is a little lever over in here that you can press and it goes let me and you can go ahead and press that and it fires hooray it, it fired anyways let's go into some size comparisons so that you can see how tall slash short this character actually is alright so here he is right next to Pohatu and I know I said that I tried to make it in scale with the standard Tomamata build as you can see it's a head higher that's because it is hard to make legs and, and, and this relative size with posability of course, I can go to Shapeways and cheat, or I can get some more system pieces, but I don't have a lot of system pieces. So, yeah. Taller than Pohatu. Here he is with the modified um, set of Taraka Onua, as you can see here. Um, taller than a Taraga. Now let's go ahead and do a comparison with something a little modern, shall we? So here he is, right next to Tahu, Uniter of Fire. And as you can see, uh, kind of short in comparison to your standard um, um, modern sets that um, have came back and uh, came out um, like a a couple years back and of course we can't forget good guy and good guy and good guy why so many good guys dare I say why not <laughs> the army shall grow the army shall grow even more just you wait and yeah, that's about it for this video, so I hope you all enjoyed, and like always, take it away, myself. Hello fellow compatriots, and welcome to the end of the video. If you guys want to follow me in any social media, the links to all those are in the description down below. I have Facebook, Instagram, Tumblr, even the TTV message boards as well. 
And on top of that, you, if you guys want to see the latest content, be sure to go to Patreon, where our videos are up a week early in advance. And as for a quick update on uh, the self-mock that I'm doing, the actual, like, uh, self-mock, the 3.0, not this one, because this isn't exactly 3.0, this is just a stand-in in the meantime until I actually make the actual self-mock that I am currently making instead of just the base form version. So, yeah, it's coming along well. I got half of the skeleton done. I got the legs and the and the adamant slash crotch region. So, most of it is done. The skeleton. Once I'm done with the skeleton, I'm going to be covering it with the with the frame, with the actual shell plating, which is going to be system, because most of the build already has Technic, and I feel like um, the Technic will only go so far when it comes to detailing and designing, and I feel system is the better way to go, especially for the light up feature, like I mentioned, along with a whole load of other functions integrated into the build without it compris compromising any of the design aspects of it. So, stay tuned for that. And I think that's about it for this video. So, if you guys enjoyed, be sure to leave a like and, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys!